next presenter is Dr. Ian Robinson. This session is entitled Blended Learning, Same, Same but Different. I'm going to ask you for a bit of participation today. The first exercise I'd like you to do is to have a look at these images. Try to select no more than three images that represent the way that you see blended learning. So these become metaphors for the way that you interpret blended learning. Let's have a look. We've got a coffee grinder, got a, some fusion cooking, standard blender. We've got this image of a painting which is uh, slightly psychedelic. The cross between an Angertown and a Brahmin, a concrete mixer. So you'll see the hybrid vehicle. And then we've got a sound mixer. We've got a mix there of uh, various paints that haven't really mixed in a complete way. And then we've got, that's a Labradoodle, it's a mixture of beans. And then at the bottom we've got one of these oil leaks, and really what we've now got is an environmental disaster. An industrial mincer at the top, and you would all recognise an iPhone. Here we've got, we've got four sorts of paint. These are blends of colours to create different tones. The camouflage blend. People uh, blending together some materials to make a potting mixture. The white water rafting. And then we've got blends of tea, wool polyester blends, mashups. And we've got, we've got some splotches of paint there. Orchestras, blended whiskey, mist blender, mixer. What I'd like you to do is get down to one metaphor that reasonably represents your idea of blended learning. And to make that useful, what we really need to do there is ask, well, why did you choose that particular image? And, and what I'd like you to do, look at the metaphor and say, what is it about that metaphor that positively represents what I understand blended learning to be about? And what is it about the metaphor or the image that negatively represents what I understand blended learning to be about? Now, could I just ask someone to volunteer, just briefly give us an idea of what your metaphor was and what sort of problems and the negatives of that? I chose the cement mixer and the good of it was that it's the right mix most of the time and the, the negative of it is that the dollars it's constant. Thank you very much. Uh, I chose a mashup because I love that music and it's interesting, it's fun and bright. It caters for different music styles. So we have music from today and yesterday and one song. <coughs> Uh, the negative is that it can be like the structure, it might turn some people off. Uh, I chose the hybrid car. I thought it was a good blend of, of uh, you know, traditional technology and new technology. So that was the positive. But I, I see the negative as uh, it, it's still not fully using the, the technology now. But, um, I will do one more. Uh, I chose the fusion cookery uh, because it took in language literacy and numeracy skills, different cultures. It had pictures, text, formulas, um, communication, and mechanical skills, smell, sight, and that sort of stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Now, would anyone like to respond to one of those four? I thought I'd like to respond to the hybrid car uh, metaphor, because I came to that one after I came to my original conclusion that I found and choose the meat blend. Because I think a lot of people, well, it's my opinion anyway, that some people take an approach to blended learning that, okay, it's the 21st century, therefore we should be using this stuff. So we'll just mash them together with a whole bunch of traditional learning techniques, we'll grind it up, and then out comes this fleshy, meaty substance which might or might not be usable. Maybe the hybrid car philosophy is a better one, and it's a bit more positive. So now what I'd like to do is throw a, a number of ideas in your directions that hopefully will start to try and consolidate some of the thoughts that you've had. This model just categorises them as either in enabling models, enhancing models, or transforming models. In the first place, it's often about access. The second model is one about incremental change. Now, fundamentally, it seems to me that definitions of blended learning fall into two categories. One category is the structural category, and the other is transformational category. You can see that there are two definitions of structural definitions of blended learning, and very much they're about uh, the integration of new technologies with what already exists. So the sorts of things that structural definitions concern themselves with are where the learning occurs, the degree of separation geographically and virtually, the delivery strategy used, not so much the pedagogic underpinnings, the media use, uh, the technologies, and the level of integration of technology. In some cases, the technology is a bolt-on. In some cases, it's fully integrated. The second 
form at the other end, and I think this is a continuum, that blended learning is about a transformational idea. It's about saying, what do we do now? What would we like to do and how would we like to achieve it and how would that be possible? And what, what new principles do we need to put into place in order for that to occur? Now, that's a very difficult thing for an established organisation to do when you've got established infrastructure. But it's not a bad exercise for any organisation or, in fact, any individual or small group of individuals within an organisation to do is to blue sky it. And then you can start stripping it back. But unless you blue sky in the first place, you just don't get the idea. <coughs> Another way of looking at this is to say, well, there are some major frames or major lenses through which we need to look at the idea of blended learning. It seems to me that ultimately, to implement a new system, you actually have to look through all of them. In terms of the structural framing, management has certain responsibilities and they relate to expenditure and income and quality assurance processes and so on. There are the issues to do with human, physical, virtual and financial resources that are simply available. The management frame is a critical frame to look through, but what it does, often does it is it tends to find itself in conflict with the teaching and learning frame. And then there's a technological frame which I guess you could say is a structural frame, really. A technological frame that says, well, what, what is there available? What's on the horizon? What have we got? What risks can we take with technology? What sort of financial situation? So that we can not only buy it, but we can maintain it. Here's a model of blended learning. And you can see that what it is, is, it, is a model that says, face-to-face -face learning or computer-mediated learning are the normal, and we're going to integrate the other with it. Here's another model. In this case, what we have is the normal practice, which is face-to-face, -face. and what we're going to do is we're going to inter integrate some ideas to do with distributed or distance learning with our face-to-face. -face. Now, here's my two models. They are also structural. They fundamentally say, well, if you put together face-to-face -face learning, self-paced learning, and online collaborative learning, what you've got is blended learning, and the second model, the one on the right, that looks at the idea that blended learning is about workshops, e-learning, video e-learning, books, and uh, webinars. Now, here's a couple of models that sort of shift the focus a bit. What we have here is uh, a model that says you need to construct that teaching and learning model out of uh, a set of tasks, a set of resources, a, a, a covered set of supports, and how they need to overlap in the assessments. And the second one is a community of inquiry. Um, now here what we start to do is get into models that are more concerned with teaching and learning principles rather than strategies. And I think if one is serious about saying where are we going with blended learning, then you have to start with what are the principles that we are aspiring to. And out of those principles, you can then determine a set of practices which are consistent with the principles. And from those practices, you can then say, well, what are the strategies that we might be able to use in order to support the practices and to achieve the principles? You, know, you can see on the right-hand side, this one is about a mixing of cognitivism, performance support and constructivism. It's essentially a pedagogic model. Final model. It says that blended learning is somehow related to pedagogic concerns, technological concerns, integrated design, Evaluation, management, the resource support, and some ethical considerations in institutions. I'd like to put this definition of blended learning up. Blended learning is an approach which allows the adoption of a range of learning strategies in a variety of learning environments to cater for differences in learning styles, learning interests and needs, and a varia and variations in learning opportunities. Well, that definition is a definition which was created by the Flexible Delivery Working Party in 1992 with the exception that it was flexible delivery as an approach. Now, they also added that uses technology where appropriate. So, the take-home message today is that blended learning is an opportunity to evaluate your teaching and learning practices, irrespective of whether it's a new idea or an old idea. The positive about it is that it's an opportunity to consider the assumptions that are underpinning the practices in which you or your organisation engage within the context and the restrictions that that organisation engages that is to the benefit of the learners but is sustainable in terms of teaching practice. Bye -bye.